Hi, here we are with the chapter two essay, How do Monsters Reflect Their Time? Write an essay in which you respond to one of the following questions taken from Monsters chapter two. So you can see you have the opportunity to write on about a dozen different questions. Genoese, Cohen, Beowulf, Vizinar, Kaplan, Poole, Bostrom, and Isaac Asimov. So take some time, do some reading, consider the questions. By the way, just as an aside, remember these questions are different from the questions on discussion three. Right? There's no overlap. The final draft of this essay will be due on Monday, November the 9th. I know November the 9th seems a million miles away, but it's actually just two weeks. Be sure to follow the out-of-class essay guidelines for matters of form and style. Be sure to include a word count at the end of your essay. Remember, you must meet minimum requirements, including word count, sources, and subject matter. And as always, no late essays will be accepted, so please make sure you're on time. Now, as we've done before, with chapter one, and I know that we had a few students who added in a bit late who were not able to participate in this properly. Hopefully this will happen for you this time. You're gonna submit a thesis statement and topic outline to Canvas by Friday, October the 30th, 11.59 p.m. This is the same format that we use in chapter one, so if you need to take another look at it, go back to the chapter one module. I don't post a new example for this chapter because it's basically the same as chapter one, with one very important exception. This time you must have citation entries for two sources. None of those sources are from the textbook. The participation grade will be assigned for this. Now, if this were a face-to-face -face class, I would have spent some time in class talking about how to use the Mesa College Library to do good quality research. Well, that's not possible during COVID, of course. So instead, I have a three-part video called the Triangle of Research, parts one, two, and three. It's, a, it's not quite 45 minutes. It's really more like about 40 minutes when you put all three of them together. I highly encourage you to watch these videos, okay? Because they show you how to do good quality research. Not everything is equal in the world. Not all opinions are equal. Just because something made it onto the website doesn't mean it's correct. I know, shock, right? Using the Mesa College website for the library will get you to good quality sources, okay, including peer-reviewed materials. You have to watch the videos to see what I mean by peer-reviewed materials, but that's very important because we have an assignment that requires peer-reviewed materials here in Chapter 2. The class will be divided into peer editing groups. These will be new groups, okay? I will get rid of the Chapter 1 groups and reform new groups okay again follow the instructions that i gave you for chapter one on how to get into your group page which essentially is go to the navigation menu in canvas where it says people people then you'll go to chapter two groups you will only be able to enter your own group okay a lot of people say well, i don't know which group i'm in well it's the, only, it's the one that you get to go into that's the group that you're in the other groups will not allow you in you need to submit your rough draft to Canvas and to me Wednesday, November the 4th. Then submit the peer editing to your group and to me by Friday, November the 6th, 11.59 p.m. for both of those. Okay, so just like we did in Chapter 1. Now the minimum requirements. This may take a little bit because it's a little bit different. 1,000 to about 1,400 words. By the way, if you go longer, that's okay, but I just want you to understand, I'm not looking for 2,000 word essays or something of that sort. Essay structure, including introduction, concession, rebuttal, main body, conclusion. If you're still confused about this, again, look at the videos that I have posted on 
canvas in the introduction, I'm producing an essay. You need citations from at least four different sources that originate in print or have print analogs. Okay, two sources must at least must be from peer reviewed journals or scholarly books. These are in addition to any sources taken from our textbook. So let's talk about what this means. First of all, sources that originate in print or have print analogs. These would be books, magazines, newspapers, journals, government reports, and such like that. In other words, they have been printed or they were printed along with electronic versions. Okay. Now during COVID, especially where we have no access to the printed books, this is where we might rely on eBooks again, accessible through our library and all of our databases, such as JSTOR and EBSCOhost have articles and essays that appear in print. Okay. This is different from material that has only been published on the web. So that's not included here. The second term that you need to understand is peer reviewed journals or scholarly books. Okay. What does this mean? Well, there's a whole group of publications called scholarly journals. And what they do is they publish research written by experts, scientists, doctors, professors, people who really know their stuff. But when they write an article, they don't just send it into a journal and they say, oh, this is wonderful. We're going to publish it. It gets reviewed by a group of experts themselves before anything is actually published. They look at it for accuracy, currency, relevance, authenticity, all kinds of important considerations. It is very difficult to get an article published in a peer reviewed journal. But once it has been, it has the highest level of credibility we can possibly ask for. Doesn't mean they're always perfect. Mistakes are definitely made. But in journals, they correct those mistakes and they're continually evolving. Unlike say magazines and newspapers, which have strictly editorial review or websites, which quite frankly may have no review whatsoever. A scholarly book is like a journal only in book form. Scholarly books are written by or published by, I should say, university presses, Harvard University Press, Oxford University Press, and I will accept those kind of materials as well. You need at least two of these, two of these types of sources. And again, go to the Mesa library databases. JSTOR, J-S-T-O-R, is all journals. EBSCOhost has journals and magazines and a few newspapers. So you have to click on an option button that says peer reviewed only. It's very easy to do, very easy to see. It's right there in the front. Make sure you have at least two of these. These are in addition to any sources taken from the Monsters book. Okay, you can use the Monsters book, of course, but they don't count towards your minimum requirement. If you do take other sources, obviously movies are acceptable in this class. Websites, well, we have a whole video on websites that I hope that you look at. They're not all the same as well. Some are good, some are trash. Stay away from the trash, buyer beware, right? It's on you. Lastly, as always, MLA format and presentation and documentation, including correct works cited list, would spend some time with the MLA format. Make sure you do it right. It's not hard, it really isn't. It's just a matter of following directions and applying the principles that you see in front of you. Okay, well, good luck on this assignment.